I have decided to definitively rank every wonder weapon from worst to best. I will only be doing the weapons prior to the release of BO4 due to it having different zombie health values. Every weapon will be tested on round 100 to observe its effectiveness. If a weapon can't kill anything on this round, then the recorded damage values will be used instead to rank them. Throughout the video, I will use color coding on a little image of the relevant wonder weapon to indicate its safety. Green being safe, orange being potentially life-saving and red being unable to save the player. Weapons that are green rated will get a boost in score by 10%. However, red score weapons will actually get a negation in score by 10%. Orange rated weapons will experience no change in score. An example of a weapon that is really safe is one that if fired while trapped will pretty much guarantee your survival. All of these weapons are to be used and tested on round 100. The weapon's effectiveness and co-op is not relevant. The amount of kills it can achieve times its corresponding safety multiplier will determine its score. And with that out of the way, enjoy the video. Okay, first off, before I roast this weapon, I would like to say that this ranking video is looking at how these weapons perform on round 100. I'm not saying that these weapons are going to be awful in every situation, I'm just saying that for the context of the video, your favorite wonder weapon might get shit on a little bit, and that's okay. Anyway, with that being said, the Winter's Howl is hot doo-doo garbage poo-poo in every situation. The worst of the worst, the Winter's Howl on the map 5 is a small pistol that fires a cone of freezing energy that, when upgraded, deals 2,400 damage per shot. When papped to the Winter's Fury, it holds a total of 45 rounds, and so the total damage this gun can produce is 108,000. Don't let the name fool you however, saying this weapon has fury is extremely misleading. Furiously shit maybe, but anything else is a lie. Now I just really want to point out how horrendously garbage 108,000 damage is. Okay, so a zombie on round 100 has approximately 5,525,295 health, which means that if you wanted to kill a zombie on this round with the Winter's Fury, you would need 52 max ammos. Furthermore, this will stop reliably killing zombies at round 20. This gun is hardly even a wonder weapon at this point and absolutely deserves to be last place on the list. As the second worst wonder weapon in zombies history, I would like to introduce the ray gun. The granddaddy of the wonder weapons made its first appearance in World at War, on the first zombies map ever. Back in the day, this weapon was seen as the pinnacle of killing power. However, today we can all acknowledge just how dog shit this beautiful weapon really is. The ray gun, when papped to the Portis X2 ray gun, does a total of 3000 damage per shot, and has the capacity to fire 240 rounds. This means that the most you could do, assuming you hit the same zombie and didn't miss a single time, is 720,000 damage. Seeing as how a zombie on round 100 has over 5.5 million HP, this will not get you any kills on round 100. The Scavenger, or when upgraded to the Hyena Infra Dead, is one of the two wonder weapons that came out with Call of the Dead. Unfortunately, it is impossible to get to round 100 on this map, so I just settled with round 50. This gun fires a sticky explosive bolt that explodes after about 3 seconds. The explosion is massive and will damage everything in a large radius, including the player if they do not have PhD. This weapon deals 20 23,000 damage per shot and holds a total of 36 rounds, which means the maximum this weapon will be able to achieve is 828,000 damage. A big issue this weapon has, besides the fact that it hurts you, is that it will almost certainly piss off George, which means that he will chase you around the map and slow you down and put lightning on your screen, which is just a pain in the ass. Finally, this gun will get you absolutely no kills in round 100, so there's that. Next up is the Blundergap, specifically its first Pack-a-Punch variant, the Sweeper. With Double Tap, this weapon is able to fire 14 rounds per shot, with a total ammo capacity of 122 rounds. I love this weapon to death, but I have to admit that it is kinda shitty on high rounds. If you want to get to round 100 on mob, you gotta use the acid trap, because this thing, assuming you somehow hit all 14 shots on the same zombie 122 times, will be able to accumulate 1,220,000 damage, which is not even enough to kill a single zombie on round 100. Now to talk about the Blundergat's older, cooler brother, the Acid Gat. When upgraded to the Vitriolic Withering and the player has double tap, this baby fires six sticky explosive acid canisters that attract zombies before exploding after three and a half seconds. Each explosion deals 2,500 damage, which means that the maximum damage per shot is 15,000. And assuming you hit all your shots, you might be able to rack up about 2,295,000 damage, which is still not enough to kill a single zombie on round 100. I gave this weapon an orange safety rating, as it can save you in a pinch, but it's definitely not guaranteed, because zombies can still manage to hit you before running to the acid canisters. Yeah, this was surprising to me too. The Raygun Mark III isn't the best Raygun on round 100? Well, it's true. 
true. The gun is made up of two components, the Raygun Mark III and the GKZ. The Mark III on the right hand fires green beams, reminiscent of the classic Raygun, and the left hand gun fires yellow blobs that slow down zombies. If you combine the two, you can collapse the yellow blob in on itself and create a small black hole. This is the best way to utilize the weapon and get the most out of its ammo. If you perfectly optimize the use of the black holes, this weapon can squeeze out 2,766,865 damage. This weapon cannot save you on round 100. Even though it can slow down zombies, it's just not enough to save you if you are cornered or trapped. Moving on now to the paralyzer. This gun slows down zombies before popping them and can let you fly up onto ledges and roofs. Uh, it was hard ranking this weapon because it has infinite ammo and by extension technically infinite damage. However, after testing this weapon on round 100, I can confidently say that it'll take a very very long time to kill anything with this gun and therefore I'm going to treat it like it can potentially kill zombies but you likely will never kill anything. Whereas the weapons before this one will never under any circumstance kill a single zombie so I, that's why I put it here. I gave this weapon an orange rating because it can potentially let you fly away from danger but then again it's really dangerous but it is possible. The lightning staff is like the ugly outcast brother of the staff family. It's the staff no one wants to use and for good reason. This abhorrent piece of shit when upgraded to Kimet's bite is able to spit out 198 shots which is the most ammo out of all the staffs and that's about as far as accolades go because it sports the lowest damage of all the staffs by far. Being only able to dish out 30,000 damage per shot which sounds like a lot on paper and it is when compared to the weapons before this one but but when compared to the other staffs, it's just pathetic. The total damage it can amount to is 5,940,000. This staff is only capable of killing at best at absolute best, three zombies on round 100. The Raygun Mark II is the second iteration of the Raygun, and it is a stark improvement from the Mark I. It fires green energy projectiles in a three round burst. It was first introduced and buried, and then it was implemented into every map prior and following. The thing that makes the Mark II so special is not the whopping 243 round ammo capacity, nor the 4,600 damage per shot. It's the ridiculous 21.7 times headshot multiplier. That means that per headshot, each round does 100,000 damage and therefore 300,000 per burst. Which means that if all shots land on the head of zombies, the Mark II is capable of dealing 24,300,000 damage. And as a result, can kill up to four zombies. The Raygun Mark II is easily the most effective Raygun on round 100. Okay, okay, hear me out. I understand that this weapon is widely regarded as an absolute piece of shit. Don't get me wrong, it is definitely trash. However, I gotta give credit where credit is due. It can kill on round 100. Depending on how you look at it, it can kill quite a few. Let me explain. Okay, let me explain. The VR-11 turns one zombie into a CIA agent per shot, which sort of kind of attracts zombies. This doesn't count towards your kills in game, but it does technically kill that zombie and it won't respawn, which means in theory, you can kill 24 zombies. Let's say you don't like that. You think that it should be a proper kill for it to count. If you do think that, then you suck. But also, I've got you covered because if you do manage to shoot the same zombie three times, it will explode and damage the zombies around it. You can do this eight times, which means you can get eight kills legitimately. So yeah, this gun should be able to save you, but it really can't, which is funny because that's like the main purpose of this thing. That and it can calm down George. But yeah, this is where it is in the list. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Fire Staff, or when upgraded to Kagatsushi's Blood, has a total ammo capacity of 99 shots and can theoretically kill a handful of zombies five times. I say theoretically because this obnoxious asshole crashes your game after a couple shots, which means no one on the planet has ever gotten a kill with this thing on round 100. But it is technically able to accumulate 29,700,000 damage, meaning that on paper, under the best circumstances, you could maybe kill about 120 zombies. Then again, none of this has ever been tested, so this is just going off damage numbers and health values. The KT-4 is a buildable wonder weapon on Zetsubo no Shima. It can be upgraded through a small easter egg into the Masamune. The weapon holds 42 rounds and requires a charge up to fire a puddle of goo that when walked over by zombies causes them to be infected by a spore-like plant that then deals infinite damage. This puddle costs 3 shots to create so it's quite an expensive weapon to use. This 3 round per shot usage really drops the score on this weapon because it's only able to kill a total of 336 zombies on round 100. This weapon is not very good at saving you either, the culprit also being that charge up time. By the time you have charged up the weapon, you are likely already dead. The second wonder weapon introduced in zombies was a massive improvement over the first. The wonder Wolf, when upgraded, holds a total of 36 rounds, each able to chain 
chain lightning from zombie to zombie. This chain will stop after reaching its 10th zombie, but by that deduction we can easily calculate that the total amount of kills this weapon can rack up is 360. Furthermore, this weapon on the World at War version of Doris actually takes the player's jug away if they manage to shock themselves with the weapon. The jug symbol would stay, however the effects of it disappeared, which means that in that game it's pretty bad. Anyway, this weapon does definitely have the potential to save you because of its infinite damage and no charge up time. However, the 10 zombie kill limit makes this weapon slightly less safe for the average player and that's why I settled with an orange safety rating instead of a green one. The wind staff, or when upgraded to Borea's Fury, is easily my favorite staff. It's more than capable of getting you 528 kills on round 100, as it sports infinite damage. The only thing holding this weapon back is its criminally low ammo capacity of 66 rounds. When charged halfway, this thing uses 3 ammo to create a small tornado that pulls zombies into its center and instantly kills them. This means that you can only fire 22 deadly horde killing shots with this thing, making it the staff with the lowest ammo. I gave this staff an orange safety rating as it can save you, however it's not guaranteed due to it needing a 1 second charge up which may be enough to get quintuple swiped by a group of zombies. The eye staff is the go to staff for most people when playing Origins. When upgraded to Ol's Arrow, this staff has 99 shots with the potential of firing 33 horde killing charged blasts, killing up to 792 zombies. The only real downside this weapon has is the fact that the blizzard it spawns takes around 4 seconds to kill an entire horde. That coupled with the 1 second charge up time leaves a massive opening to get downed. If you get trapped with this thing, you probably won't make it out alive. The Thunder Gun, or when upgraded to the Zeus Cannon, was first introduced on Black Ops 1 Kino de Toten. It fires compressed air that flings hordes of zombies away from the player and kills them instantly. The weapon has infinite damage, so it will never stop killing, and it holds a reasonable 28 shots when pack a punch. This weapon is at best able to kill 672 zombies on round 100, and I gave it a green rating because if you are trapped with this thing, all it takes is one shot to completely clear out what's in front of you. Before I talk about the bows, I would like to stress that they are all extremely similar in the high rounds, so for these next four there is no particular order, just lump them all into one rank. Okay, the wolf bow is basically the thunder gun with more ammo and a quarter second charge up time. It's got 75 rounds with the potential to fire 37 horde killing blasts that throw zombies away from the player. Each shot has a cool wolf howl to go with it which I think is pretty neat, and the way the zombies die with this gun is just so satisfying. The zombies get thrown back and their souls get like ripped out of their body or some shit, I don't know. Just see for yourself and agree with me, I don't like confrontation. The Void Bow is everyone's least favorite bow and I think that's criminal. I believe those people are just salty that it's the hardest bow to obtain, or they just can't use it because they are bad. Anyway, this bow, just like the Wolf Bow, has 75 rounds, with each charged shot taking 2 ammo to fire. Instead of a wolf that throws zombies away, this one opens a portal which kills all the zombies around it on impact, but that also allows flying heads to spawn into the map and eat any remaining zombies. Very cool indeed. Oh yeah, all of these bows are going to be orange rated, because they have that charge up time I mentioned earlier that can get you killed occasionally, but it does have the potential to save you so that's why it's not red the storm bow or the oh okay here we go the uh the creme de la creme is widely considered to be the most powerful bow i thought so too but surprisingly on round 100 it really can't kill a train of zombies the bow fires a storm that lasts for about five seconds and electrocutes any zombies that get too close the only way to really use this weapon effectively on high rounds is to camp with it and let the zombies funnel into the eye of the storm one by one because if a whole train runs through the storm it will be overwhelmed and will leak most of the horde and it will probably kill you as a result alrighty the fire bow shares similarities to the wolf bow because it's able to kill a whole horde instantly instead of gradually like the void and storm bows. This time, the zombies get encapsulated in a volcanic rock before being incinerated from the ground up. It's a really cool bow to see in action but it can be quite annoying to obtain because you need relatively good aim to get. The fire bow kills the same as all the other bows, however it's by far the best at killing panzers. This isn't official but if I had to guess which bow was the best on round 100, I would probably put my money on this one. The wave gun or after pap, the max wave gun holds 28 rounds and is practically identical to the thunder gun. When fired it will shoot a ray of energy that will kill all zombies in front of the player. Also in line with the thunder gun is its safety level. If you are trapped and decide to fire towards the zombies they will all puff up and pop and you will almost surely survive. Where it differs from the thunder gun quite a bit is its separated mode, the zap guns. These two halves of the wave gun when pack a punched hold a total of 148 shots that electrocute and kill a single zombie per shot. All this means that the wave gun slash zap gun combo can kill a total of 820 zombies on round 100. The apothecary servant when upgraded to the S. 
the Estestum. When upgraded to the blue Apothecan Servant, it holds 15 shots. When fired, this gun catapults a black hole that sticks to any surface. The black hole sucks zombies in from all directions for 10 whole seconds before exploding, killing all the remaining zombies. I found that per shot, I was seeing an average of around 55 zombie kills, but the most I've seen was actually 63 kills. To keep this ranking fair, however, I will use the average just to show what's most likely to happen with this gun. With that being said, the Apothecan Servant will likely grant you something like 825 kills on round 100. I think it's more than fair to say that this is probably the safest gun of all time. If you die with this thing, then you might as well uninstall the game because it doesn't get much easier than this. It took me barely any effort to get to round 100 on Revelations, even with the extremely low ammo count. Granted, I did use the Thunder Gun to chip in on the way there. 825 kills means that the Apothecan Servant racks up a 910 point score, making it the third best wonder weapon on this list. The 3179 JGB215, or better known as the Baby Gun, comes in at second place. This is because of its massive killing potential. It holds a total of 48 rounds, one shot being capable of shrinking an entire horde of zombies into disgusting little gremlin-like creatures. When the zombies are in this form, walking over them sends them flying away from the player. This also kills them instantly. So if we do the math, 48 shots, 24 kills each, adds up to 1,152 kills. The weapon is actually pretty safe to use too. However, baby zombies can still hit you if you are careless, which might be the straw that breaks the camel's back in the end. This gun will not only carry you to high rounds, but it will also allow you to live your best fantasies of kicking the shit out of kids in game. Yep, the Slick of Fire is the best weapon of all time. This thing squirts purple slippery acid on enemies and the shit keeps spreading from zombie to zombie. The gun holds a whopping 50 shots, all easily capable capable of one-shotting entire hordes. That means that the Slick of Fire can kill up to 1200 zombies on round 100. Before this weapon was patched, it could easily one-shot entire rounds, but even after the nerf, it still manages to reign supreme above all else. As for safety, I gave it an orange rating. Although it manages to save you in most situations, zombies can easily still hit you if you're unlucky. Some of you really observant viewers are probably wondering about a particular weapon. Such a weapon surely would break the established criteria. Well, you would be completely right, random viewer. I have no idea where the hell to rank this thing. The jet gun is a buildable wonder weapon on transit, and by god I hate this thing so much. It does infinite damage and has infinite ammo. Sounds great, right? Well no, because this thing also breaks if you dare shoot it for more than 6 seconds. And when, not if, when that happens, your sorry ass is gonna have to pick up every single one of those 4 pieces and run each one individually over to a workbench. This is the absolute textbook example of good on paper, not meaning necessarily that it's good practically. This thing can't save you, it takes ages to kill anything, you have to wait for this dial to reach 4000 RPM, while also making sure that this dial doesn't reach the end of the red area. Oh, and if you do manage to get this dial to the red, get ready for a whole 1 minute and 30 seconds of waiting for it to cool down. This gun isn't even worth being on the list, so I'm going to give it its own rating. Jet gun rank. Screw this piece of shit. And that wraps up my definitive ranking of all the wonder weapons from World at War to Black Ops 3. I tried to make this list as objective as I could, but obviously there is no perfect way to do it. If you have any disagreements with my list, feel free to be wrong in the comments section below. <laughs> Let me know if you agree with anything too, because I would love to know. You don't have to like or sub or anything, I really don't mind, but if you do, then thank you. And of course, thank you for watching.